In 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5, And said unto them, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Now they had a vision before them. They had a vision before them. They were pursuing after that. But something happened. They become weary. They become tired. And they began to say here, they said, we want to have a king. Now make us a king. And he says, that we might be like other nations round about us. Now this really grieved the heart of the Lord. And we see here that. But the, the thing displeased Samuel. And we can see later on, we know this portion, but we will read it again. When they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Did you get the portion? First Samuel chapter 8 and verse 7. So we can see that the Lord was grieved in his heart. And I think that grief has not been just because that they had asked for a king. More than that, that should have grieved the heart of God is... They desire to be like other nations. They desire to be like other nations. They desired. You know, when God called them out, what did the Lord say? Turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 19. Please read, someone, and help me. Exodus, chapter 19. Yeah. And how I bear you on evil things and not you unto myself. Yeah. Now therefore, if you must obey my words in you and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar pleasure unto me above all the people <coughs> for all the works of my people. And he shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and yeah. holy nation. Yeah. These are the words that thou shalt speak unto me. Praise God. Yeah, these are the words that thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. You know, God desired to be in the midst of them. God called them out to be a peculiar people. God called them out to be unlike other nations. You see that? So the vision before them was to be unlike other nations and to be a nation unto God. You see that? But, you know, they did move a long way, isn't it? Yes, no. Yeah. They pursued after that call for a while. But after some time, you know that, that this can be true of us? This can be true of us? We can be weary. We hold a vision before us. We hold a vision of a glorious nation. That glorious nation is what? The glorious church. The children of Israel pursued after this for a long time. But then, they were weary. It, see, it says here that they asked for a king. And they desired to be like other nations. And that was contrary to the desire of God. God's vision for them was that they may be a nation unlike other nations. Praise God. That they may be a people unlike other people. But they desired to be like other people. So it was not simply a desire for a king that displeased the Lord. But their desire, their longing that they want to be conformed to the pattern 
in other nations. You see that? So we see that, yeah, they did move on in that vision for a while. But later on, they began to be weary and they began to say that we want to now conform to the pattern of other nations. Do you know one thing that God had planned a king for the children of Israel? God had planned a king for the children of Israel, but in the fullness of his time. God had desired for a king for the children of Israel, but in the fullness of time, a king who will be different from other kings. <laughs> Praise God. Because they are called to be a nation different from other nations. God had a desire to have a king for them. A king who is unlike other kings. The Lord wants to say to us something this night. So we see that the greatest danger in this hour is many want to be like other nations. For the Lord knew if a king comes to them they will be more conformed to the, the style of the nations that are around them rather than bring them and maintain them as a nation unto God. So we see that God in His own wisdom had a king upon His heart for the children of Israel, but a king unlike other kings upon this earth. But the children of Israel, they began to say, we want to have a king. You know, the Lord was wanting to have a king over Israel who will, a, who will have a heart after his own, after his own heart. A king who will have a heart after the heart of God. That is what God had upon his heart. But the children of Israel were impatient. They were weary. They were tired. And they began to say, we want to be like other nations. We want to have as a king like other nations. But it was so contrary to what God had placed before them. Remember, they did live a long time now. All these years, who was their king? God was their king. So you can't tell them that they didn't have a vision before them. You can tell them they were disobedient. No, they, all these years they moved. They recognized God as king. But now they began to say, we want to be like other nations. We want to have a king like other nations. Oh, beloved, you know, God had upon his heart for a king, you know, that a king be given to them. A king who will lead them and show them the king of kings. A king who will lead them and show them what the nation or, or the people of God should be like. But instead of that, they desired. Now, we see that, you know, we see this really fulfilled in the life of David. When we look at the life of David, he was a king who was after the heart of God. In, in Psalms 23 and verse 1, someone please read and help me. Psalms 23 and 1. Please, somebody read that. I know, we all know that verse. <coughs> someone read that boldly and clearly. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Who said that? David said that. Praise God. The Lord is my shepherd. Praise God. In other words, David was telling, the Lord is my leader. The Lord God is my leader and I am only a sheep of his pastor. And what is the house of Israel? 
sheep of his pasture. So David, he was identifying himself with the people. Praise God. Can you see such a king today in the earth? That's why the Lord said. That's why the Lord had a desire for them to have a king who will show them the king of kings and a king who will identify with his people. Praise God. We are coming to something. We are heading towards something. So even if it gets late, don't worry. So we see very clearly in the heart of God, God had a leadership for the house of Israel. But the house of Israel was impatient with God. And they began to say, Lord, we need a leader now. We need a king. Like other kings. Like other nations. Yeah, let us read again. Psalm 100 and verse 3, please. Someone read that. Read that again at the beginning. Knowing that the Lord He is God. Yes. Yes, it is He that hath made us. Not we ourselves. Then? We are His people. And the sheep of His pasture. Praise God. See, God was looking for a king who shall identify with the sheep, with the people. As we have said this morning, the true leadership today, they are both sheep and shepherd. Praise God. They are both sheep and shepherd. So here we see that this king is identifying with the people and telling that the Lord is the true king, isn't it? That's what he says. Turn again to Psalms 24, verse 7 and 8. Someone read loudly, please, again. Psalms 27, 24, verse 7 and 8. Whose psalm is it? It is? It is David's psalm. And he says here, the king of glory shall come in. Yeah, read again. Who is this king of glory? Yeah. Lord strong and mighty. Yes. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Do you see a king who has had a heart after God? You know, after God's own heart. Psalm 24 verse 7 and 8. Brother. So we see, but the, the king before this was not a king like this. Yes? Can you understand that? He was a different king. But this is the kind of king God had upon his heart. But we see that the people were in a hurry. You know why they were under attack of the Amalekites and the Philistines? They needed deliverance. They were constantly under the attack of the Amalekites and the Philistines. They needed deliverance. And we know that God was giving them what? Deliverance. God was giving them deliverance. God was leading them. But we see that they desired for a king. Now one thing that I want to note here for us is, you know, they wanted deliverance from these nations. At the same time, they want to be like the nations. Do you understand what I'm saying? They, they, they want deliverance from these nations, but yet again, they want to be like the nations. That is what the picture of the present day spiritual world. They want deliverance. They want liberty. But they are not ready for separation.
They want deliverance from the nations. At the same time, they want to be like the nations. This is what we see today, beloved. Many places, this is what we see. And it sounds strange, but it was true in those days and it is true today. We want the liberty of the Spirit of God in our midst. We want His Lordship. But at the same time, we are quick to turn to our own ideas. We want His Lordship. We say, Lord, we want you to perform. We want your liberty. We want you to lead us. But at the same time, we turn to our own ideas and we want to do exactly like others are doing. We turn again to the old methods and old ways. In other words, we try to get back into the former bondages in our lives. So this is something that we need to realize. Now when you look at the children of Israel, they were pursuing after this vision. God was with them. God was helping them. But suddenly they became weary and they began to ask for a king. You know, it's therefore we need to wait for God's time. We need to wait for God's leadership to be raised up. And this is very, very important for us to note. Very important for us to note. So this, you know, they began to say, make us a king. You know, it is, it seems to be so easy to ask for a king. And what is the reason? We read that again here. They, they also had some reasons and justifications. Their case was put up with real good reasons. Verse 20. Verse 20. Yeah, that's right. That we may also be like all the nations. And that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. We want somebody, Lord. Somebody who will go before us and somebody who would fight our battles, judges, and go out before us and fight our battles. Was not God doing this already? He was already doing it. But the fancy here for them is they want to have a king like other nations. You know, I, I, I can see that today that it's so easy for us to ask for a leader. It is so easy for us to ask for a leader. You know, like the children of Israel said, make us a king. There are, there are people who cry out today, give us a leader. Or make us a leader. Make us a leader. And what is the reason that they make us a leader? This leader will do everything for them. As we read here, we see, they said, give us a king. Why they wanted a king? Who will judge them? Who would go before them? And who will fight the battles? So they can be at rest. This is one thing they desired for. Give us a leader. Someone who will tell us what to do and what not to do. Give us a leader who will have sleepless nights and we will all will sleep well. Give us a leader that he will run around and we will be at rest. Give us a leader. Give us a leader. He will do all things for us. So that we have no responsibility. Do you know one thing? Too often leadership has become a very convenient escapism. Give us a king. If somebody would say, brother, this is what it is. 
Oh, I will tell my leader. We see that today that therefore people are asking for a leader so that they may not be responsible. Everything can be put on this leader. He will do everything. Easy way to avoid responsibility. Yeah, if you go to some places, they say, Brother, please send somebody from Delhi to this place. I don't want to say who says that, but they are here. <laughs> send us a leader, brother, so that this man will do everything and we can be addressed. Nay, that is not God's way. That's why today we have all kinds of leaders which are not ordained of God. Which, was, which is not from the heart of God and it is not from the will of God. That's why we see that
Thank you.